Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this week's special office hour. And we have a special guest with us, Victor Momo. He's going to share his expert journey. And so without wasting any more time, you know, I'm going to turn it over to Victor. Victor, over to you. <laughs> right. OK. All right. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, let me just share my screen first of all. So um, once again, good afternoon, everybody. So um, and first of all, thank you, Michael, for this opportunity. You know, I consider it a great privilege to be asked by the first and for a long time only MVP in Nigeria and Africa, you know, to come share, you know, my Excel journey. And um, so I, I don't take this um, opportunity for granted. So thank you very much. Um, so um, maybe we just get into it. I know. Maybe people have a lot of questions, but we obviously can't answer all of them in um, in one session. But you know, um, we would we would, would take them as they come. Um, so, Michael, just to confirm, we can answer the questions as they come in, right? We don't have to wait till the end. Is that correct? We don't have to wait. Okay. I will even be reading the questions oh. to you, so you don't have to monitor. So you'll be able to focus okay, that's on good. the side. Okay, that, that's fine. So I have this here, which um, I just stole from one of my, um, you know, slide decks. Then I have something maybe similar to it in the next slide, you know, which kind of just summarizes, um, you know, my Excel journey, so to say. So I started off at Excel 95, and I know that's going to send, you know, like the wrong signals because then people start thinking, <laughs> okay, this guy, <laughs> start thinking this guy is really very old. No, I'm, I'm a young guy. I was, I was still very young in 95. But um, like I've said in, you know, most of the um, forums of Fora that I've been privileged to be at that, my dad used to work as, you know, like a Microsoft Office trainer. You know, his company then was a consulting company. Back then we didn't have a lot of, you know, um, companies that were into, you know, Excel and Office training. So he started off, you know, with them and, you know, we had all these big books at home, you know, on his shelf and all that. But, you know, back then as a kid, we were very too concerned with, you know, the very technical things. Computers were for games back then. But he would always say, you can only use the computer if you wanted to type or do something technical. So we tell him we want to, we want to do something on Microsoft Word. And when he leaves the room, we just change to one of our games. You know, so I, I, I mean that I saw Excel, first of all, you know, 95 and Excel 95, but I didn't really get to use it, you know, that much. But professionally, more or less, since like 2007, 2008. Then um, I also, you know, wrote the, um, what was it called? The um, Microsoft um, certification. Excel certification. Of course, there are two levels. You either do just the Microsoft Office specialist or you do the expert level. So I decided to do the expert. And people always ask, oh, why did you do this certification? And I always say, just for one reason, just so that I can say it in a time like this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's really <laughs> why. <laughs> because the, the reality is that a lot of people don't even know. I mean, maybe even employers, you know, that are looking for people who are very skilled in Excel. They probably don't even know there's a certification. But of course, certification is one thing, you know, but actually being proficient in it is another. But the good thing about the Microsoft Excel certification is that it's very hands on. So it's not like someone is asking you how many columns do you have in Excel or how many rows. It's really more about giving you live examples and you being able to solve them. So it's really to an extent, I would say a good test of, you know, one's proficiency, right? You know, but again, some people are very skilled at passing exams and doesn't mean that they are the best at the subject. But that's a matter for another day. So I um, will do this when I have the time, you know, work as an Excel DBA trainer um, when I can. I've been doing a lot for Society of Petroleum, you know, so I get to take most of the Excel trainings and, and um, you know, the VBA training. Um, Mr. Excel will come. I'll talk a little more in detail on this when I move, you know, but oh, now nah, this is not correct. Actually, it's supposed to be over 3,000 posts. So as at yesterday, I was at three nine seven nine or so. So I think I have 21, 21 posts to hit four thousand. <laughs> so <laughs> so wow, I'll wow. correct, I'll correct that. But again, it, it doesn't mean four thousand solutions because you know sometimes we have a couple of back and forth. Like when somebody posts a question and isn't too clear, and you're seeking for clarity. You know, you ask some clarifying questions. To 
So sometimes there could be, you know, interchange, you know, of, um, you know, questions back and forth. But maybe effectively, maybe about 2,000, who knows? But officially, yes, about 4,000. Then, um, of course, this part for those who are members of, you know, the Nigerian Excel users, but I know that there could be some other people there already. Um, I run along with some other guys, including Michael, you know, like a Telegram group, which we call the Nigerian Excel users. For short, we just see NEU. Okay. So we will talk a little bit about that on. Then specialties, I mean, for me, what I consider myself, you know, maybe really good at in Excel or really interested in, of course, advanced Excel, array formulas. This is changing a little now with the introduction of, you know, dynamic arrays and all the new functions, the filter, sort, sort by unique, you know, random array. So you don't really get to do all the control shift enter thing again. But that's one thing I really like because it kind of pushes me to think up solutions that otherwise would have been thought you know like impossible but it forces you to kind of really think and that's why i like to delve into you know advanced excel array formulas some people like to use a lot of helper cells you know they they have five columns then there's a final column that depends on those five but i always like to just do it in one column you know or one cell you know so kind of just bring everything together so you kind of see like some mega formulas but um it's it's fun all the same then i also like of course vba you know for developing solutions to solve everyday problems then the last part maybe which is one of the reasons why i have been doing a lot on maybe the excel users group and a lot for society of petroleum engineers and maybe offer to also take this too is because i like teaching i like sharing knowledge that's one thing you know i'm extremely you know passionate about so i'm always looking for opportunities you know to do that whether for free or you know otherwise but once there's an opportunity to teach and you know rob minds it's always good. i i feel that the more you teach the more you know some people really don't believe in that concept but maybe because i always feel that I never want to pass across the wrong information. So what that means is that if I have to teach people, I have to really, really make sure I know what I'm talking about because I want to pass the correct information across. So that forces me to maybe learn stuff more than I need to, just to be sure that I'm communicating clearly, communicating, you know, as in the right information to people. Okay, so I'll jump. This is just, this was what I used initially. You know, before I remember that, oh, I had that profile somewhere. So I just dug it up and brought it back here. So this kind of just puts, you know, um, some, well, maybe PowerPoint feel to it. So the only things I'll probably add here, okay, yeah, that I joined, okay, Mr. Excel.com in 2012 officially. Then I started my Excel channel this year, which is called Excel Moments. And mm -hmm. I must actually thank Michael for, you know, I would say the inspiration to, to start, you know, I've been doing a lot of videos for Nigerian Excel users, just informal videos. But Michael was like, you do a lot of, you know, quality videos in terms of what you teach. You know, why don't you put some of these things on, um, you know, on YouTube, right? Because I was always too concerned about having that perfect product before putting it online. But it was like, you know, some people like it that way. Just be yourself, go ahead and, you know, so I, I summoned the courage and overcame the inertia and I started this year and I think it's been it's been good. It's been good. Subscription is up, maybe in the 150s, 160s, you know. Rome wasn't built in a day. So I'm even going to um, share we are, the, we are the, going the gradually. Channel. Okay, so okay, yes. All right. So um so at the bottom there you will see um what I believe in strongly, and then I will then go into my maybe official last slide which just talks about really how maybe I started off and how I've gotten to here, which for me is still very close to the beginning, but well, <laughs> you know. So don't bother about the equations. For those who are maybe a little familiar with VBA, they probably can make some, some sense out of this. But what I mean by this is that from now till the end, I like to do what I feel that, you know, people should do. Sometimes you need to unlearn because again, for most of us that are doing a lot with Excel, a lot of us are self-taught, you know, like we started off just by messing around with things. Michael too can attest to that, you know, so we are self-taught. Sometimes you then go for some professional courses, get some guidance and they say, oh no, this shouldn't be done this way. Then you have to unlearn some of the things that you, you previously, you knew or previously learned, then, you know, you relearn. And I also constantly think, you know, think up new solutions 
you know, even though you have a solution that works, you can always think up new ones. I work with a lot of people when they are trying to solve a problem and I'm trying to think of that perfect solution, an elegant solution. They say, Victor, just give us one that works, that when we when we get it to work, we will come back and refine it. But what I realize is that once you get a solution that works for them, they will never come back and refine it. <laughs> once it's working, that is it. But for me, I'm always thinking of how to improve what even already makes sense today, you know, so continue to think and then continue to teach okay so now maybe to the part that will interest most which is how you know i kind of started off so um what i have here you know captures for me you know what you really need if you want to get to you know maybe an admirable level if you may in excel this is in no particular order but at least this is from my own journey and most times people ask me these questions i write them in text and this is exactly what I say in text, but this time I've just been able to put some visuals to it. So one of the places where I learned the most, the most of what I you know, know was on MrExcel.com. And that was why even though I put online forums here, I actually had to put their logo there and say, well, I'm referring to online forums because I was, you know, on Chandu, I was an Excel forum, of course, um, my Datrice's um, forum, but Mr. Excel, you know, is where I, I learned a lot. And what I realized is that when you start off, of course, like when I started off in 2012, a lot of times you are looking at questions and you can't answer them. I try to answer them, maybe I can't or then I couldn't. I wait for the solutions. And when the solutions come, I'm like, oh, okay, so this can actually be solved in this way. And sometimes because you have, you know, community of experts, people from all around the world, sometimes you see five solutions to the same problem. So it helps you to then appreciate that, oh, okay, fine, there isn't just one way to think about this. So when you spend a lot of time on the forums, trust me, you would have multiple ways of solving the same problems. And the truth is as much as it looks like new problems come up every day, but in essence, there isn't so much that will be different. So if you've if you've had a feel of, um, you know, if you had a feel of, you know, MrExcel.com, you probably have seen all possible, I use that word, you know, um, with a lot of care, but all possible, you know, problems that can crop up, you know. So you, you gradually find yourself moving from just reading solutions to posting solutions, because as bad as you think you are, you're better as bad as you think you are. You just realize somebody comes and says, oh, I have 10 numbers. I want to add them together. I don't want to use A1 plus A2 plus A3. How can I do it? And you'll be like, ah, is this person for real? Yeah, that person is for real. That's the level at which he is. Then you just put your own song. A1 to A10, person posts and says, well, thank you very much. That's so brilliant. The next thing you're feeling like, wow, am I this good? You know, but those thank yous, they cost nothing, but they go a long way to help you and encourage you to be better. So you realize that gradually you start, you know, answering questions. And before you know it, you get to the point that we have most questions that, you know, come up on the forum, you can answer. What I used to do, I'm not necessarily saying you should, maybe not everybody wants. Want to do that is <laughs> are you after a while confirmation that means I excel the way it is categorized it has a tab which is called um, on I don't really have maybe Mr. Excel forum or let me see okay yeah because I was there well I'm pretty much so if you look here if you can see my screen you will see here which is called unanswered threads right so unanswered threads are those are you know, questions or posts that nobody has had. No response. I go, to, I go to the regular ones again. I go to one answer thread and I look at, okay, nobody has answered all these questions. Okay, what's going on? Let me, uh, uh, you know, try to give them a short because sometimes a good job of explaining what their problem really is. Sometimes text doesn't do justice to explanations. You need to put an image or put a spreadsheet. So, well, so that I don't belabor Mr. Excel.com, that's one place where you know, I, I actually learned quite a lot. Google is another one. I consider myself an expert Googler, if you may, <laughs> in the sense that I look for things. A lot of times, not like I know so much, I actually just search a lot for things. And when I search and I find a result, I'm never satisfied with one. I'm always like, okay, let's see. You know, I like this diversity of thought and diversity of opinion. Let me see what somebody else is doing. So I check on some other forums. You know, they will say, if you want to hide something from the black man, put it in a book. I am a friend would say, you know, a friend and I would say rather that, you know, if you want to hide something from someone who doesn't want to become an expert, put it in page two of Google. 
Because most times we always check page one. Once you check the first page of results in Google, nobody goes to the second page. You're like, you know, you're fine. And I, but I never do that, you know. So I'm always like checking, go to page two, go to page three. Sometimes the, the best results are not returned on the first page, depending on the keywords you use. You know, so I ask a lot in Google. The good thing about Google is that it connects you to a lot of sites, right? As opposed to just being on one site. So you can see solutions in diverse places. You know, like even Chandu.org, that's one guy I found very interesting and I learned a lot about that reformula tool from him. Then um, books, I always believe that, you know, you must read to really understand some of these things. A lot of us, like I said, you know, learn, uh, we are self-taught. So our learning isn't exactly sequential. It's kind of haphazard. You learn B before you learn A, then you learn Z, then you come back and learn K because we are learning on a need to use basis. You know, people say, oh, OK, fine. Yes, there's a problem today. So I solve that problem. So now I can use pivot tables. Pivot tables may be more advanced than using an if function. But you've not used if function because you've not had a problem that required if function. So you, you kind of just learn in such a very, very random manner. Although sometimes you know that you can still connect the dots later on. But one thing that is good about books is that books are structured. You know, they kind of start from least difficult to difficult to more difficult and all that you know so it kind of puts a sequence to your learning so you start learning from the introduction excel what the interface looks like you know learn about the data types you know formatting then they go into simple um, the tabs you know excel options like that like that formulas advanced formulas and all pivot tables vba and all that so books are very good so i read you know excel uh, bible 2010 by john working back it's still my reference book even though excel has moved way beyond 2010 but trust me as in the references in there as in there they, they they will be with us forever you know because not a lot has changed even though a lot has changed i mean and i'm talking about you know Excel as in Excel. I'm not talking about all the power tools. So books are very good. And this is one book anytime somebody asks, well, what book do you, should I read? I just send this to you. Recently, I know I sent it to two people within this week, but I sent them the 2019. We are, you know, John Wack, but again, a lot of the content is still here. So that's one very good one. Then YouTube, Gavin, Excel is fun. He's my buddy, even though he doesn't know I exist you know but and thus different lots array formulas control shift enter the guys in math of course you know he wrote a book on that i think it was them slain was it is this slain excel dragons or mastering control shift enter formulas i can't remember the exact title so i i am subscribed to his channel and you know i watch his videos um, get his exercises you know practice them so I did that a lot, you know, back then. Like I say, most of these things are not things I do so, so much these days, maybe because work doesn't give you, you know, so much of that, um, you know, latitude or flexibility. So, you know, a lot of things I do now, are, yes, I, I mean, I still keep developing based on the new things, but I don't spend as much time on, on a couple of these as I used to. Back then, I worked um, in the refinery and I had, you know, I was working shifts. I had four days on, four days off. So my four days off was just MrExcel.com. I just make sure I have enough fuel in the gen. I have food to eat. I don't go anywhere. And internet connection. Then I just stay on MrExcel.com. Just getting all the problems, download them, solve, 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 post. You know, so that time really helped me to develop. Now I'm going to tie that in to projects. I was just saying that for projects, you know, people say, oh, in the office, I don't get to have a lot of tasks, you know. And I'm like, a lot of times you have to create problems for yourself. Sometimes you don't wait until people bring problems to you. You just have to think of something that looks like you can't even do and then try to do it. The truth is, once you give that a shot, you will inadvertently be learning. It's, it's just natural because in trying to solve that problem, because you don't have the technical expertise for it, you will need to seek help. You will need to do a lot of, you know, Googling. I use that word a lot. <laughs> Googling. You will need to do a lot of, you know, search on MrExcel.com. You may need to search books. So in the process of just searching, you will be stumbling on a lot of things. And the next thing you just find out that from just one simple project of just saying, I want to just develop this in Excel, you know, I want to develop something that is like maybe automatically generate a pay slip from Some PDF like I do sometimes and then send it via email. I know that's the, the other part is a little complex, but I'm saying if you just think about that as a simple project to do that from end to end, you have to do a lot of things. You have to do some things with formulas. 
you know, to link the payslip summary uh, page to the raw data, some index, some match, some view call, then you need to do some video. So if you, if you just pick that simple one, you already have, you know, your work cut out for you, right? So projects are ways you can develop. And if you don't even have that, when you stay on like online forums, people bring real life problems. I'm an engineer by, you know, training science guy. I know a little about finance because maybe I worked in an audit firm, right? You know, so I have some ideas, but I always claim not to have any idea so that people don't bug me with, <laughs> with things we know. But the truth is, when you go on the forum like Mr. Excel does, people from all walks, somebody who works in a law firm, you see somebody who works as an automobile engineer, you see somebody who works in NASA, you see somebody who is a medical doctor, you see somebody who is, you know, maybe uh, into actuary, actuarial sciences. So you kind of start getting a feel of, oh, what different people use Excel for. You see HR people talking some things about, you know, payroll, Oh, okay, some template, some you know, uh, tracking staff template, and all that, all that. So it kind of gives you a better feel of what's going on. So even if you don't have at your workplace official projects, just by being on these forums, you get to be exposed to a lot of that. And like I always say, you can create problems for yourself. You don't have to wait. You know, create problems for yourself and try to solve them using all the tools that you have available: Google, YouTube online forums, books, by the time you piece through, I mean, you know, all, piece all of this together, you would you'll definitely be better off. So, sharing, trying to share, if you if you call me to come and teach anything, I always revise. So even if you call me tomorrow and say, come and teach basic Excel, Excel 101, I'm going to do serious revision. Sometimes I'll jokingly say, ah, let them organ fall my hand, you know, and some will say, ah, no, now nah, is it not you? There's nothing like, is it not you? Sometimes when you get into the advanced stuff, you tend to even forget some of the basic things. So my point is, the way I, I couch knowledge sharing here is that in trying to share, you are forced to learn, especially if you are somebody who really wants to make sure that you make no um, you make no errors in the process. Yeah, sharing what's accurate, so you'll be forced to learn. So what I've just captured here on this tour, just my uh, profile on Excel. Uh, Mr. Excel uh, Excel. Yes, sir. Okay, so there's a question in here now for you, and the question okay. is uh, during that the, the person is asking. There are times during your learning stage that you find solution slash answers to some tasks, and you are very happy. You know, you give yourself a good yes. treat. But then there are other times <laughs> where you know you're head, you're head deep into a task with no solution in sight and it's dragging yes. on and you're getting stressed about it. What motivates you to learn more? You know, what motivates you to to know to keep at it until you get the answer? Okay. I, I think that's actually I think that's actually an excellent, you know, actually an excellent question. And and, and I think all of us have been there, you know, in the sense that you would have, you know, a lot of frustration. I, I think for me, for me, it's really having, you know, an end goal in sight. That's it's more like saying, you know, this is my target. I want to be this. So if I want to be this, then if I picture myself tomorrow as maybe the third Microsoft Excel MVP in Nigeria, for example, you know, and this is what it entails, that picture of where I see myself for me is what you know spurs me. The truth is we have to be real. Yes, you will definitely have times of frustration. I remember just to take you back in answering this question, what even made me get so deep into this was a problem I had. That's when I started getting in, into the formulas, you know, world a, a little more. Look at the simple problem, which maybe most of us can't solve now. Um, good enough. Well, I have my screen, but I could just something simple. Sorry, I might use some names. But I about what I do. Okay. So now somebody says, oh, for example, I want to know who had the highest score here or what the highest score is. If you want to find the highest score, it's very easy, right? For the highest score, you just do a max. Okay, so you just do max of this. Somebody who doesn't like that can do large, right? And do large of one. Somebody who wants to be very techy. Okay, so now this is an easy one. But what I wanted to do on that day was now to find the name of the who had the highest score. 
most of us have solved this kind of problem. So I tried everything I could think of based on my knowledge there. I couldn't. It was really, really frustrating. You know, that was the night I spent, you know, like I was I was on this from like maybe 11 p.m. till almost like 4.30 a.m. in the morning. Then piercing through the internet like, ah, should it be that difficult if I could just do max to get, you know, the maximum, then it should be that easy. I didn't know there was anything like match. I didn't know there was anything like index. I had to craft the question in Google, you know, also getting the right terminologies to sometimes may determine whether you get the right results or not, you know, and I, it, it was really a frustrating night for me. Maybe that frustration wasn't as long as what some of you experienced, but it's really about, you know, as in what the end goal is and what you have in mind. If there's something you're trying to achieve, you know, that always pause you. Just imagine some somebody says you solve this problem and give you one million error. Forget about frustration. You will find solution <laughs> because you are thinking about the one million. So I think it's really to have your eye on the prize. What do you see yourself doing? Where do you see yourself getting to? If you see yourself as, you know, the go to data scientist, the go to Excel guy, I want to have an Excel problem. I'm the guy they should go to. Then these moments of frustration, they come. Yes, you have, you know, you temporarily feel it, but you have to just you know, spring back into action just because you're yeah, like, man, if I have to be the guy that everybody has to go to, then I have to, you know, know this, you know, and, and there are times that you are really stuck and you need to seek help. I think you should always be able to ask questions and always ask for help, you know. So this was so this was what got me into liking Excel so much. This problem, this is the simple problem that got me into this, you know. So I got the 15, then I needed to return Michael, you know, and I couldn't return Michael. I just couldn't do that. So I then had to check through the internet, checked and checked and checked. You know, I wasn't sure how to write the question. How do I get the maximum um, on the name of the person who had the highest score in a test? But it might not be a test. It could be something else. It could be elections and the person who had the highest number of votes, you know, but somehow, some way, after like four or five hours, I was able to see some index match and then like, OK, what is exactly is this match? How does it work? How does index work? Then that and that took me deeper in because one thing I always do is this. I go to support.office.com. That's what I spend a lot of time. When I see a function, I go there and I study about the function, how the function was designed to work. Because a lot of times they are trying to do some things and they won't work because the manufacturer has designed it not to work that way. So why trying to you know do a lot of trial and error? Why try a lot of trial and error if you can just go to the manufacturer and just look at the manual you know, and say, OK, you are the one who manufactured this. What does the manual say? The manual says that, oh, some product does not like true false. It only likes numbers. OK, so that's the reason why sometimes you use a some product. The answer is zero, whereas you're supposed to get an answer, a numeric answer. So you have to find a way to convert the true false to one and zero. So you might use a zero plus this, one times this, or use the double unary minus minus. So, you know, if you don't read the documentation, you don't even know that this is why this problem is happening. So reading and reading about the functions is really one way to to really get you know, what it is, you know, um, like to master the functions and all. I know Michael have maybe answered it the way I, I know how to answer it, and then I've maybe added a little more. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's really what um, I wanted to say on that. Is there any other question for now? <laughs> all right. So, yes, the, the question is from me now. Huh? <laughs> so, okay. uh, <laughs> that's a difficult you know, one. Because I've known you, <laughs> I've known you for long yes. and uh, the truth is there, there are many people joining us that they've not seen the amazing things you've done before. So I guess they, 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 they are missing this opportunity to ask you some things that I'm sure even after this, this session they go and they start seeing some of the things you've done, they will be like, oh, I wish that I had this question. So I'm going to ask, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to deny them the opportunity of getting some of those answers. And so my question is, uh, you know, you do a lot of amazing things with Excel macro, and this is something that I, a lot of people who are learning Excel, who, you know, people who genuinely pay to go and do Excel training, because that's something that uh, anybody that pays money to learn Excel, I take those people as very serious. I take them as someone who genuinely wants to know this thing. I want to know it to the best. Of, of of their capability and whatsoever is possible. Sometimes people come to me and say, okay, I have done this training here, I've done that training here. I think what's next? What's next? And a lot of times that what's next always end up in 
macro, you understanding how to automate yes. reports with the uh, VBA. And then they, yes. they try it and it looks like roadblock. And even right now in Nigeria, I, I don't think there is any institution that teaches macro, you know, on a, like they have it in a calendar that you know anytime you go there, you, you can join a class. So most people do it on yes. a request basis. So my question is this, you have done a lot of amazing things. You even teach people on macro and it's just because of work constraints. I'm sure if you had the, yes. the time and, and luxury, you would even have it as a recurring thing. Maybe every month or every two months, there will be different I, uh, sessions. I'm thinking about that. Yeah, right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> great, great. So my question is twofold. One is, can you tell us uh, the amazing things? You know, just mention the things that are really, you know, that the layman now, not you now, the layman sees and is like, wow, this is possible with macro. And then the ones that maybe for you too, you're like, you know, these are really amazing things that you, you, they are worth the time you spent on them. So that's one one. Okay. Then number two, okay. again, for yeah. someone interested, you know, what should they do? How should they uh, go about that journey about learning macro? You know, what's the right methodology? Because I see people getting frustrated, like, they, 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 they feel like on like exit where they can stumble on a, a video online or Google and what they are yeah, learning they can yeah. copy and paste and it works. Macro it just looks like they can't even implement what they are learning. So yes, can you that frustration that? is not good at all. Right? <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, so, okay, those are the those are the two questions kind of um well they are they are siblings. And more questions kind of. are coming. So maybe when you are okay. done with this. Maybe these are triggered more questions. I don't know, but I can see that some more questions are coming. But let me like you answer well, this while I pile up okay. that ones. Excellent. Well, I think we are here to answer the question, so I'm 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 open to all questions. All right. So um, let me show you this. This one have been in you know any you our meetups they would have seen this. Um, so I'm just going to put something here. I'm not going to talk to too much about this part here, you know. So, Michael, can you see my screen, right? Can you, you see yes. the who wants to be a millionaire? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, for, for everybody who is, yeah, good. So, for everybody who is dialed in, you probably can see this, and it looks like I opened a different application altogether. And I designed it in such a way that irrespective of the screen I put it on, it kind of fits like 90, 95% of the screen. So you notice there's just a little window here. There's just a little window here like that and like that. The idea is just so that it kind of fills the screen and it looks like, you know, it's one application on its own. But this is really in Excel. Now, somebody will say, okay, fine. You know, how is this useful? What do you use this for? A lot of people could have used this for it. You could make, as in people's learning, you know, more interesting. Imagine if you wanted to teach kids, you could put any set of questions you wanted to put in, in here. It doesn't have to be Excel questions, just like here, I actually used, you know, Excel questions. So this could be, you know, how you coordinate, you know, your quizzes or your exams. So you load the questions in. Of course, you can load the questions in a normal Excel sheet and get them to answer. But this interface kind of helps, you know, it's, it's kind of more appealing, at least to me. And this is a product of boredom. One of those Saturdays, I was just bored and I just said, hmm, who wants to be a millionaire? Because that's something I play a lot. I used to follow the American show, the British show, the Nigerian one a lot. And I used to have the game on my phone. I had the game on my computer. So I love trivia. So, so I just said, ah, can't want, you know, what's it called? Who wants to be a millionaire in Excel? Then, you know, I kind of took it up. Of course, I did get stuck at some point, but that's part of the learning and that's one of the reasons I know what I know today because I got stuck and I tried to find a way around. So with this, you know, I could, um, this is tied to bar, right? So if you notice, it has a lot of interesting features which kind of make it look like if... Um, and then uh, so, so that they will know it works really awesome, like I see the real thing because I've seen it in action. Uh, maybe you can even... Yes, like everything works. Even the music is okay. just unfortunately. Yeah, that's the part of the yeah, that's yes, So you can see that at the timer, I have a timer here, and the timer is counting down, you know. And these are features, everything here is in Excel, you know. So 
this is counting down. The money tree is also going up because I got the first question right. I'm now at 1000. So if I do a 50 50 here, it would eliminate two. So obviously the right answer has to be there. That's one thing you have to think about. So in designing things like this, of course, there's a lot of thought that goes into it because you can say take two answers out and you can take even the correct answer out. Then that becomes a problem, right? <laughs> you know, so, so you have to think through a lot of this. So you can then select and um, um, what is it called? It would uh, pop up. I just did this next here just so that you have control. Initially, what I used to do is that once you select the answer, the answer triggers the next question. That's how it used to work, you know, and I could do next. Now, the reason why I don't want to click ask the audience is because for some strange reason, which I know, though, but I didn't check before the, the audience can throw up an error. And since I want to press, if I then click ask the audience and it throws up an error, they'll say, ah, so this thing even has bugs. But some days I'm lucky. <laughs> some days I'm not too lucky. So let's see which day today is. <laughs> It works today, good, you know. So what you what you realize is this: the logic here is just that if the question is simple, I set it in such a way that these numbers are randomly generated. Yes, but if the question is simple, the audience is like at each question a difficulty level. So based on the difficulty, if it's a simple question, but for some reason you don't just know it, you know the audience will likely get it right. So this one says an intersection of a row and column is what it is a cell, obviously, right? You know, for some reason, I don't know it. But that's why the bulk of them will most likely get it. But if you use the audience somewhere around question 10, they may not get it right because that's a difficult question. So I also try to mirror reality in it, you know, like the way people would vote. A simple question, like most times you will see that everybody might say 80% would say it is this answer. And so then I can just close this and then I can select the cell. I just create suspense, three seconds delay before the green or the red comes out, you know, and all that. So this is all in, um, what's it called? This is all in VBA and this is all in Excel. Okay, I think I had this button initially to pause the time if I wanted to do that, but you know, that functionality, I can just close this, you know, just for now. Right, something else I did I one time was, you know, to do a class. Yeah, you can make it go ahead. Before yeah. it moves another one. So in, I think okay, you want to put back there. No, 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 no. I just want to quickly. Make, okay, yeah, you okay. can so that these issues in the background because I can see someone even asking a question about okay, it. He's saying, you know, designing okay. these who wants designing these who wants to be a millionaire in Excel or access. Yes. Do you think access could have been better? I don't know. Uh, maybe the person knows access, but oh, before you answer that, I even just wanted to mention that. He, I think it was 2017. The meetup we had in 2017. That, that you yes you you showcase this and um, yes, I, I remember guess. how it was like you know uh, before <laughs> your session came up you know people were yeah. like okay everybody's presentation they they had an idea or it was like yes. maybe they say sixty percent what you already knew and then it's just the thirty or forty percent uh, of what the presenter was talking about I was completely newish to them but when yes. your session came up. <laughs> And you showed this, you know, everybody were they were all at the edge of their seats because like I, I remember me that moment. I honestly I remember like, yes. oh boy, <laughs> this is a <laughs> lot of work and it was to, to think that you will do this with all the features. You know, people will be like, let me just do the feature that is easy to implement in Excel and not try to replicate yes. the entire thing. But you went all yes. out to like, I'm going to replicate the entire, the entire Yeah, house, the only you know, part that doesn't uh, work is call a friend for now. You know, that's the only one that I haven't yeah, that's done that's anything. That's with. <laughs> exactly right. But every other one works. You know, the 50 50 works. Uh, you know, that works. The ask the audience works. You know, tree and, and, and tree works. Remember, and normally you always have the time. I don't, know, okay. I don't know if also you talk about the election one, but let me let you go on because the one that handles the election oh. too also. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that so one that I, 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 I'm not that we can use to, you know, for companies, associations, for churches, for you know, they can use it to conduct election without having to, you know, using technology kind of, you know, they don't have to do a lot of paper stuff anymore. You know, oh, it was yes, also. Yes. You know. <laughs> so let me let you carry on while yeah, I call the other I, questions. Okay, okay, yeah. So somebody was asking whether access, right? Yes, yes. You're saying that would this have been possible or even better to implement in Access? 
I well, I, I would I would be careful to use the word better, right? I I do access to I quite a bit, but well, maybe I admit that Charles is better than me, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, we, I, I mean, we have I've done something. Session, right? uh, okay. Like, sorry for know. the interruption. We had Charles in the first session, and then I've been noticing it. A bit of the same pattern in some of the people you refer to as great influencers in your journey. So he to mention yes. Bill Jelen, you know, he mentioned John. Chandro, and and those are the two Parker. people you mentioned a lot more people too. But he mentioned those yes. two people, and you know, and you are mentioning them again. And someone is asking already, he's saying, uh, "Let me just pull up his question right now." He said, talking oh, about mentors, I, I, you know, how would you yes. describe Mr. Excel? Versus, Mr. versus Chando in terms of what they do, their pattern of teaching. So, well, I guess you you understand what it means. He says, talking about yeah. mentors, how would you describe Mr. Excel versus Chando in terms of what they do, their pattern of teaching? Oh, okay, so, um, so let me put it this way so that I don't give, you know, like an incorrect answer if you may. <laughs> um, I follow Chandu's, you know, site a lot, right? Chandu.org. So, but I haven't, I think I've only watched two or three of his videos, in fairness. A lot of articles on his site, of course, I've read them, you know, he breaks down formulas. There's a big formula that was used somewhere, and, or he could have a special guest break that down. So, I'm more like Chandu from Chandu.org, you know, as opposed to maybe a lot of interactions with Chandu himself from maybe a teaching a teaching perspective, right? But I've seen a couple of his videos and uh, I read a lot of his articles. Bill Jelin, of course, I read Bill Jelin's books. I just bought, you know, some of the, uh, you know, his latest books, which talk about dynamic arrays, you know, then I remember the Holy Macro books and all that. I, I think the two of them are, for me, if you may, I would probably say comparable. If you had asked me, maybe Bill Jelin and Mike Gavin, and here I would have said, okay, now we are talking about two different people. Because the thing with, um, what's it called, Chandu and, and Bill, is that at least on the VBA side, both of them are very strong. You know, that's their real strength. Bill Jelin is also very good with formulas, but he will admit that, see, when it comes to these array formulas, this thing gets to mess with my head. So if you, if you watch um, this dwelling Excel, between my Gavin and um, what's it called, and uh, Bill Jelin a lot, where they bring a problem and they say, okay, my Gavin solve it, and uh, Bill Jelin solve it. Like what you always notice, exactly. So what you notice at the end of the day is that my Gavin will use formulas. Bill Jelin, when he just looks at it, you say, no, this one I beg. The guy just rushes and does VBA, you know? So in that sense, I would say, okay, for both of them, yeah, but in terms of how they teach, what I like about Bill Jelin a lot is the fact that he has a lot of humor. If you read his books too, you see a lot of that, you know. So it's kind of, um, you know, enjoyable reading, reading it. Chandu for me is just one very, very, I use the word advisably, crazy fellow. I have a lot of respect for Indians and my respect for them all got into Excel. I didn't appreciate how good they were until I started doing Excel. There's a guy, if you get on chandu.org, just look for a guy called Narayank. That's his um, username. That guy then used to bring some very, very crazy, crazy formulas. And I'm like, how does somebody write these kind of things? You know, so I have a lot of respect for Chandu from that side in the sense that the guy is really, really good, you know, and he's also able to teach. But I, I haven't followed him a lot in terms of videos. So when you say compare their teaching methods, it might be a little difficult for me now. For Bill Jelin, I've seen a lot of his videos. I read a lot of his books. For Chandu, I read more of his articles and follow his, um, you know, his forum. But I, if you ask for my personal advice, if, if you have both of them, you are good. If you have one of them, you are good. Both of them are masters, and there's no argument about that. Great, great. Uh, so that brothers okay. will be annoyed that you are taking too much of my question. Before you continue with the BBA, okay. Uh, so there's another question. No, I, someone I want has asked. Question, another question. Yes. Okay, great, yes. great. Okay, so uh, this question is, what can you do when you study Excel videos so much, but you do not have projects to work with? Did, did you get the question? Back to, it, it takes me, I, I don't know if the question, yes, I don't know, no, no, it's okay, I, I'll take the answer again. 
I don't know if the person joined um, now or, you know, has been in from the beginning. My answer may not be exactly correct, but this is what I've seen. And I know that people always ask that. If you look at what I have in this, who wants to be in here? A project, what I mean by a project in that sense was that it's not as if somebody gave me and said, okay, Victor, you need to do this. We, we need to also try to open ourselves up and, you know, open our, like our, you know, um, our creative bags up, like thinking creatively about what we can use Excel for and things that we can do. I always insist that you can create projects for yourself. You just need to ask yourself something you have because there are times, okay, a lot of us have a lot of add-ins that we use in Excel, for example, like uh, Mike, I don't know if you use cool tools, K-U-T-O-O-L-S. You may have seen that add-in, it's one. I, I use yes, some yes. things from the site a lot. <laughs> and, and you can use cool tools, you have answer. able bits. And yeah. maybe you have able bits, cool tools, you know, they have a couple of add-ins like that, which we use to do some things that Excel natively cannot do, right? The question you now ask yourself is, okay, the way I the way I would approach those kind of things and the way I work is this, is can I replicate what those add-ins are doing? Because those add-ins were created by people, right? So if I can replicate them, that's a project for me. I would learn because my objective is to learn. So that's how I work. I, I downloaded this guy's add-in, um, John Akampura. You know, he's adding for doing a lot of sheets my manipulations. I think it's called, Piv no, it's not called Pivot Power. What is it called? Tab Hound. Yes, it's called Tab Hound. You can check it out. So Tab Hound, it's very nice and very pleased. I saw what he did all interface could as a move to the other navigator and all that. So I decided in cell, you know. So my point is this: I think it's just to don't wait, wait until you are given things. You can create for yourself. Some of that maybe talk to yourself. Why is it that Excel you can only hide one sheet? Why can't you hide multiple sheets? Those kind of questions. Once you ask yourself, you have as a project. Yes, you may not have the skills to actually execute it, is, but by creating it and putting that as your objective, you work towards it. So I, I, I think yes, I, I get you. For example, I'm a petroleum engineer, right? I don't work as a data scientist like everybody thinks. I don't work as a data analyst. I don't work as an analyst. But people keep asking, oh, um, but you use Excel, this, this. So don't think that, oh, in my office, yes, but we, we do use Excel a lot as petroleum engineers, right? But some other people might prefer to just use some fanciful tools. But some of us will tell them, no, Excel can do this. Let's bring it to Excel. So don't think that I also always have projects like that to develop. No, I have to sit down and think to myself, okay, can I do this? right? I want to rename all the files in the folder. How will I do that? I will have to go one by one and be changing the name. Let's say I wanted to add a prefix. It's just that I try to showcase is that adding I created, but English, rename all the files in the folder and add a prefix to it. Maybe add 2019, all the files in the folder. There are 100 files in there. Do I want to go into Windows Explorer and start clicking one after the other and editing? So I created something that could browse to the folder and it will ask me, do you want to do a prefix? Do you want to do a suffix? Do you want to do insert, change a, a text in between? And based on my selection, it, so my point is the problems you face should trigger, you know, projects. For some reason, the person says, I want to have 2020 in front of all of this. I want to have 2019 in front of all of this to distinguish this from this. So you will do it manually and maybe you're satisfied that you've done it. But you always have to think on a bigger scale. I did it for five files. It was fine manually. But can I do it for 100 files manually? It doesn't make a lot of sense. That's a project. So challenges bring about projects. Just think about your everyday life, something that is a little difficult for you. That's a project. Try to do it and you will learn. That's my personal opinion. Because I know this is one question I get a lot. I don't have projects in my office. They don't, I'm like, well, your life isn't about your office. When you leave the office, get home and create problems for yourself and solve them, you know? So that's my opinion. It's not agreeable by everybody, but that's what I feel, you know? Thanks. So one other question. Uh, okay. So this person says, I'm, I'm an Excel. <laughs> Okay, so this person says I'm an Excel enthusiast and my first yes. breakthrough project was automating a result co computation for my school in 2004. Could you please share your first project slash success 
and how you went about it, please. Uh, so, I honestly cannot get to my first project right now, okay? But my first project was something I also created for myself, which was, um, you know, something interesting. And, and for me, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not stuck on, sorry, I'm trying to pull something from my other computer, but um, I'll try and multitask. I, I used to think I was good at multitasking, but I realized I'm not. <laughs> Okay, so, but but this is it. What my first project was, was I was trying to create for the EPL, right? For those of us who follow football. So I was trying to create, um, what is it called? My own dashboard, my own EPL dashboard and summary tables and a lot of that. So what I was doing was I wanted to link to a site that had all the matches that were played every week. Scrape that data from the site, pull it into Excel, you know, pull that into Excel. From there, create my own link table, create a lot of summaries that I can see. Highest goal scorer, you know, um, team with the highest number of goals, fastest goal, you know, like all of that, all of that, all of that. So it was like a football type thing, right? Which is not exactly serious work. But, but I, I think that's the problem sometimes. We limit ourselves. We are too full discipline centric in our learning of Excel. I'm a petroleum engineer. I've done something petroleum engineering, right? Some of them I have some SPE papers that you can see on one petrol based on coupling Excel with some other petroleum engineering softwares and using that to speed up, um, you know, some calibration process. But my point is, that's why when I teach Excel, I don't teach in a discipline centric manner. If I teach you filter, filter is filter. It means that everybody can filter. Filter is not restricted to who is filtering. You know, you can filter petroleum data, you can filter legal data, you can filter medical data. So I'm always big on learning the concepts first of all before saying let me tie it to a particular thing so if you learn the concept it's easier for you so my first project was that you know some epl dashboard type thing so maybe i would try honestly i don't know if i even have it it used to be on one of my laptops that crashed right but if i ever get to it it would be nice i never thought this kind of question would come up and they say your first project <laughs> you know so <laughs> so but that was what it was about so it was more or less like pulling information from a, um, different sites bringing that information into excel and then and, and trying to do a lot of the you know um, what's it called these summaries how many goals we scored in between first and 20th minute between 25th and 45th minute all those kind of you know interesting things and it's always like oh, that's not serious stuff not serious in the sense that it is not account or you know engineering but i learned a lot from it you know, and that's the important thing. And that knowledge is part of what I'm using for either my official work now or the things I do around. So sorry, I couldn't show you that, but I can always get to it. <laughs> also, uh, a bit of a sad news. <laughs> so we have officially five more minutes. Five but minutes. Can try and stretch it to ten five minutes. minutes more. <laughs> yeah, we own our. No, so so let's let, so <laughs> where's the bottleneck? Where's the bottleneck from? Is the bottleneck from me or you? <laughs> uh, there, there's no button like it's over enjoyment and they say good thing you know when we, uh, as I still said time is relative when you are we're doing something we enjoy you know you find out that time flies yeah <laughs> so I think we still have to be like you like I, but I know you, have, if you want to show I'm here I'm, yeah. here with, I'm yeah. here with you I mean I, I'm not um, I'm not um, in a hurry to uh, to leave so if you so if okay, you um, all right, then. So, we can stretch it to say the, the the thing is just because uh uh we just wanted to be a bit more uh careful with what we announced to them that okay it's one hour and then so but yes no no, no that's fine I, yes, you know <laughs> yeah so, i mean if, if they are down with uh, they are down with that that's fine uh, i think your email is showing <laughs> and i'm not sure that's yes, what you want yes. to share with us okay. no, no no that's what so, i want uh, to show don't worry it's fine it's fine oh, okay good okay. So, um, any other thing you want to share? And originally, I was supposed to do something on pivot table, but it's good. Uh, we can, I can always do that another time. So, anything you want to share that you have? Yeah. So, we will not interrupt you with questions anymore. Even I think that that was the last question. So, I uh, give you the next ten minutes to every other thing you had in mind to share with us. Okay, that's okay, 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 all right. I, I will see if I can get I will see if I can get to that project. You know, I would really love to, to get to it too, you know, and uh, kind of show it. 
if I should be like, oh, is this what I did then? And I felt I did something big, <laughs> you know? Okay. So, so, so Michael, this was the one you referred to. Yes, yes. You said what? Okay. I said that in that case, you shouldn't ask the rest of us for what was our first project because, you know, if you feel your, your hood is something that would be like, when you see that, then for those of us that didn't even know by the 95, you know, <laughs> that our hood started with the girl 2007, or even I started using more of 2010 yeah, then than even 2007. So, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, there are many, but many years time. ahead. <laughs> Yes. No, Michael, I'm just I'm just many years in terms of when I started, not in terms of knowledge, you know, just to give you that credit. You know, I, I, at the end of the day, I, I think learning curves are differ. Some of us didn't have what a lot of these people today have. You know, I have an intern in the office. He's, he's out of the office. We're not That's working. It. We're not working in from the office right now. He's learning a lot. I'm giving him things to do. He's learning. And the next thing I just say, do this, do this. Do this the guy has done it and he brings it back i'm like wow this guy's learned so much in a short time i'm like what he knows now in one month i probably i probably learned it in two years because again i didn't have you know somebody like that there so exactly so my point is even somebody who started yesterday is, uh, can be better than me tomorrow the good thing is in this in the chat section i had already written i said uh you can access victor momo's youtube channel i, I posted it and then I said, uh, okay, yes, Victor is perhaps yes. most sophisticated and knowledgeable expert, Excel expert in Nigeria, better than anyone <laughs> I know, and I learned from him. Is better than me. So I had already mentioned that. So you cannot thank God I've done the disclaimer ahead. <laughs> so I know you, you're trying oh, to. Whatever I say now doesn't hold anything. What I have is just market. <laughs> but uh, we all know that you are, you are the indisputable. You know, you have all of it, uh, and no, because of I, the effort, I, that's why I, I'm happy. I, I, I know, I know what, I know what I'm not. Thank you for the compliments. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, so what this was was, I, I, the version I pulled up obviously isn't the most recent version. I, I just checked my old system and I saw, I, I saw one that I just felt I could use. So it might have a few glitches here and there, but what this was was just, you know, to create. It was just like a voting app. We used to vote in church for council members and it used to be done manually, papers, and at the end of the day, people have to collect the paper. They now have voted for this, who voted for this, who voted for this, and who voted for that. So the process used to take some time, but it's not just the fact that the process takes some time, it's just the fact that, um, um, what's it called, that you could never guarantee the accuracy of the data. So sometimes by the time they do the addition, you will realize that, oh, there's some mismatch there are 300 people that voted here 298 here 301 here but the good thing with something like excel here is the fact that the data is always going to be correct so what we always have most times is that we have groups of three or groups of two and we have two people so we felt okay how can we have a solution that everybody can work with because my church is a mix of you know both educated and maybe some uneducated people not everybody has a smartphone but we said, okay, fine, not everybody can use a computer, but everybody can use a touch screen. Even people that are not so learned, they can touch. You know, if you just tell them, touch this, they can touch. So everybody can touch. So what we did was just to create this, I created this form in Excel, you know, and um, we used a computer that had a touch screen, like one of my own computers and somebody else's computer. So once you touch whoever you're voting for here, it is recorded against, of course, your number, which is this number one here. It's recorded against your number in the database. And once, so let me let me demonstrate. So I'm going to touch my screen. I think my screen is a touch screen. So once I touch, you see that it moves. So this is group one, we just finished. Now this is group two. So if I made a mistake in my initial um, selection, I can use the recall button. So I just push the recall button, okay? So if I push the recall button, it means that I didn't want to vote for Modric. Of course, I voted for Zidane. Some of these names, sorry, are names of people in my church, but we're testing something there. Okay, so then I select Zidane. Once I select Zidane, the recall button is now grayed out because there are only two people. So there are only two options. So you can't make a mistake or you shouldn't make a mistake twice. So if you made a mistake, you make a mistake again, then really, I mean, it's difficult for us to understand. So I disable the recall button. I vote here, then I vote here. Once I do that, it says thank you. That's number one. Number two comes up. The next person is ready to vote. You know, select, select, select. Now, as you are doing all of this, it's being recorded in the database. So I'm touching this. I'm using my 
touch screen, so you might not see my mouse, but let me use my mouse just so that we can all write. OK, so the good thing about this is that everything is always going to be correct. You know, if you recall, it is going to go back to the database and subtract or take out that value, you know, and, and then put in the new value. So sometimes the solutions are very simple to address. So that's why I, I, I still emphasize the fact that projects are based on challenges. This was a challenge in church and that, you know, brought about a project. So I think if you if you keep an open mind and you're always somebody who is looking for better ways of doing things, you always have projects. You will always have projects because I just created this and then, you know, my brother does a lot with when it comes to, you know, implementation and user testing. Uh -huh. So this is not the final product. If I showed you the final one, you would understand what has gone into it. It looks more beautiful than this. I'm not so, 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 you know, good on aesthetics. So I just do functionality. I give it to him. I'm like, okay, you do all the positioning. He says, no, this button cannot be here. It has to be here. It has to have this font, this color. Like, yeah, the expert, go ahead, you know. So at the end of the day, once you are done with all of this now, you have the results in there. So I just want to show you, you know, the results. And everything is so simple because it's just a simple what? So if you look at this spreadsheet, if you can see the spreadsheet, this is just all it is. So those were all the votes down. So you notice this is group one, group two, group three. In the actual one, I think what I used to do is that once I come in, I just need to put them in the setup. Whatever you put in here will feed that form in terms of names. And that would also feed this. So you can see that the first person voted for contestant two, he voted for contestant four, he voted for contestant five. Here I have a start time and finish time. Why was I doing this? Because we we're trying to justify that this was also faster, not just that it was accurate. Then I could do a duration, you know, calculation. So at the end of the day, okay, ah, this is a very old version. <laughs> you know, I have a, a bar chart that, or a histogram that kind of shows that 10 people voted between within five seconds, 15 people voted within 10 seconds, and all that and all that. So that we can use that to also estimate how long it will take us if we have 1,000 people voting on the average, you know, they, they use 10 seconds and all of that, all of that. Then there's just a simple result here, very simple, which just shows, oh, okay, who the winner is. So the, in the real one, we are tied everything together. And, you know, the, the point is that won't finish voting on like that one where you vote they have to collate they have to sort the moment the last person votes here the result is ready in fact the result is ready at any time right wherever you say this is the end that's the end and you know you're up to date so it's something very simple which solved a big problem the only thing we did was that we wanted to have multiple systems so what i did was just to create a network folder create two copies or three copies for the different systems so that people could vote at multiple times. Then I had a workbook, which was a consolidated workbook. We just add all the results from the three workbooks and we have the result. It's, you know, I mean, that simple. So for me, I've never really, there have been few times where I have projects in the sense of, oh, Victor, come and do this. It's more about me thinking, how better can this be? You know, I mean, can this be I think like that? I have a solution. I have a project and I move through it. But like I said, you might not have the skill sets, but that's what the project is there for. The project is there to make you get those skill sets. So you create the project, and from the project, a lot of people are talking on our Nigerian Excel users group. I hope the gossip is not about me. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so so that's so that's one. And I just wanted to show the last one would just be something. I mean, a lot of these examples are VBA, VBA, yeah. Because if you say formulas now, I can write them, but you know, some people will run it anyway. So let's leave it. So this was just me trying to create, you know, clocks and trying to be able to. I mean, it's just different things. You you, you might have a purpose, some may not have a direct, you know, you might not be able to tie it to a dollar, a dollar bill, but the objective for me is learning. So the objective is learning, and because I want to learn, I create a project. So once I click start here, the time adjust. What's the time now? This 507, right? So if you click start, you can see the time here, and then everything is. So I mean, I mean, that was just what I wanted to show on that one, you know. So it's just a timer, and uh, I just set the different times in the different cities. You know, if you go into some offices. You will see big clocks on the wall there. You will see the time in Tokyo, the time in New York, the time in Nigeria. So, you know, I just wanted that so I could do start and stop. You know, I mean, I'm not here to show you the codes behind, but I'm just saying sometimes some of these are, are you know, in a bit to learn. Sometimes they are 
in a bit to solve an existing problem. And let me show you one last. Um, if you so let me just do something. Sorry, so you can see the skeleton of that clock is actually it's actually a chart. <laughs> The skeleton is a chart. So um, I just want to sh show you some, something. Oh, it's not on this system. Oh, okay, sorry, it's not. I used to have an on high. Oh, sorry, I just changed systems. So because you know you can't imagine this, right? This one I think I showed maybe at the last meetup. If you want to unhide, you have to unhide one after the other. You know, and I really don't know why Microsoft did that because this is a, a list box. A list box can have multiple items selected. So I had to get my version of this, which I call on hide all. You know, for in mine, I can select, you know, all the four items. I used to I have a select all button at the top, so I can select all and I can hide all, all at the same time. So why did I do that? Because of a limitation I saw that Microsoft had, and sometimes I want to hide three sheets. Actually, this is not it. So it's looking out for inefficiencies. It's looking out for challenges. It's looking out for problems. Once you look out for them and you try to solve them, then that's a project. And you're fine. So don't wait until I, I I know I get that a lot, and my response is the same every time. That even if your office doesn't do this, you it's not an excuse, you know, because your life is not just about the office. Tomorrow you might move somewhere else, right? So I I learn not just for today. I learn you know for for tomorrow if you may, you know. So even if my office isn't doing this exactly right, but I learn it too because I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow where it's going to be useful or where that knowledge is going to take me to. So that's my own approach and that's how I kind of advise people. To. So I think Michael, we are right on the dot, except if somebody has a question again. <laughs> so someone asked the question, but I took the first seat to take it to the telegraph. Or maybe I should just say it if you can okay. answer and say okay. two minutes, that would be fine. So the question is, uh, for okay. someone who is keen on learning VBA, what would you advise? Yes. Projects. At, at, at the heart of it is projects. There's, there's something I can share maybe on the group. I know I shared it with um, um, Tunde Jimo, you know, recently. Uh, um, which was a question on Quora. You know, somebody was asking what's the best way to learn VBA and people you know, would say, oh, okay, no books, YouTube videos. At the end of the day, some of the experts there, you know, Brad Young, who is an MVP, Paul Kelly, you know, they all agreed that the best way to learn is to have a project. But this is the truth. You must still understand the fundamentals. For me, I'm always big on the fundamentals and the basics. So it's good to, I can't answer the question right now because I'm trying to rush. But the point is that you need to understand the fundamentals. VBA is object-oriented programming, meaning that what you are just doing is that you are manipulating objects. An object, for example, if you look at a normal English word, would be something like a table, a normal table or a chair. So in Excel, objects would be things like the workbook, the worksheets. So if you think about a normal object, there are things that it has. There are some properties, there are some characteristics that it has. A table has a color, a table has a size, a table has a height. That's the same way you have to think about objects in Excel too. You know that a worksheet may have a size, a worksheet may have number of cells that are active, a worksheet may have a tab color, you know, things like that. And then for objects too, there are things you can do with the objects. For a table, you can push it, you can sit on it. So why am I talking about all that? That's what we talk about when we say objects, methods, and properties. Once you understand that very well, everything you do in VBA is manipulating objects. You see that you are pushing the table, or pulling the table, or changing the color of the table, or changing the size of the table. Once you think about it, I can explain it in more detail. I mean, if I have a different forum. But once you understand that basics, which you can get from books, or you can get from um, what's it called, videos, YouTube. If you want to use a YouTube video, wise old, wise old channel is fine. I don't know if some people call it wise, you know, W U L. So maybe it's wise owl, I think. So wise owl YouTube channel is fine for VBA to get a hang of what's going on. I'm a fan of John Wackenbach. You can read VBA for Dummies, right? By John Wackenbach. Any of the versions is fine. So once you, I can also send you a copy if you need that. So once you do those two, that gives you some idea of the fundamental. But to really master it, you know, you have to do some things on your own. But trust me, John Wackenbach is a master. So if you then get to a certain level, you can go and read his advanced book, which is the Power Programming. That Power Programming is where he shows you a lot of possibilities. You know, and how he created, like he calls it, his award-winning 
um, you know, adding, which is called the PUP, Power Utility Pack, you know. And so it's uh, so, but but again, at the end of the day, you learn by having, you know, a project and in trying to do things. When you put this object here, you click it, you want something to happen. It doesn't happen. You now start troubleshooting. Why is it not happening? Why is it not happening? In the process of troubleshooting, you, you learn something. So you, you need to come up with tasks. You need to have projects and don't wait. I, I don't know. Well, maybe I'm the only one who thinks this way. Michael, you can chime in on this. Maybe I feel, maybe maybe my mind is just very open that I can always come up with things. But I feel that we can all, if we always look for efficiency, if efficiency is our keyword, we would always see challenges, we would always see bottlenecks, and we'll look for ways to make them better. So I don't think you need to wait to get a project. Think of something, just sit down today and think of something. I want to do this. And someone will say, how do I think about that? Well, you think about it, that's how you think about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but once you have a project, you'll be fine. Yeah. I think we need to round it off here. Yeah. So, uh, Good. This, Excellent. I'll share, Excellent. The, I'll share the Telegram link with the, with the people also. So, I think the person who asked the question and someone else has joined. Then someone asked the question now that how long does okay. it take to learn the basics? So I'm going to just tell him to move the questions onto Telegram so that he will get good, more good. answer. You can take the discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can uh, be more detailed. Yes, okay. please. Thanks yes. a lot. Uh, we are going to definitely want to have you another time if it's okay by you. So, uh, I, just I, I mean, if it's okay by you, it's okay by me. <laughs> okay, thanks, because it's a wonderful session and I, I didn't even expect that I would get this much questions. Because typically from my experience, what's to happen is the first session we do, people join that one. I think maybe some of them will be tired. They cannot join the second session. But this one we had uh, a same almost, yeah, the same number of people attended the first session. And these people stayed okay. longer and they asked more questions. And uh, in fact, when I'm going to do the video recording, and they put it on YouTube, what I will do is I'm going to split the different aspects you said so that okay. there will be a recording that has everything, then there will be another recording that will just be, okay, where you talk about how you learn, you know, the, the books, how okay. you how you go yes. from being zero to zero, you know, that yes. will be a separate video, so that will okay. be maybe some minutes. Then the, the, some the of the questions we answered. And the demonstration. So that way, yeah. that way we'll get more people yes. to able to learn from this wealth of knowledge because some people sometimes they are discouraged when they look at a video that is long they like ah 15 so minutes, they don't I, know. I have that temptation i have that temptation <laughs> to you know when i'm doing uh, that challenge rather when i'm doing my youtube videos i'm always trying to make it short but i, oh. I don't want to sacrifice the learning experience i'm trying to explain something yeah, and yeah, i need to true. spend some time uh, yeah, but getting that balance is always a challenge for me but i feel if you're engaging enough my gavin's videos are very long if you notice Excel is fun. His videos can be long, but some, some of us still see to people that you know there's value in there. So I think if you have value, people will see that. Yes. But your but your 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 strategy is fine. Yes. Split it up. You can have a part for the demonstration of some of the VBA capabilities like that. Then have a part for that, the questions okay, and have I, a part I, for the introduction. A lot of people will even start asking questions from that because. Right now, a lot of questions are <laughs> these last questions are around the VBA. So thanks again, and um, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on today's special session. You are special. You are the one who made today's special. Thank special. You, you. So special is attributed to you, and <laughs> definitely we'll have you another on another session. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Enjoy you. this one. Please make sure you go uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel. I've published. I've, I've posted it in the Q&A. And also, if you want to keep asking him questions, he's very active on the Telegram group. I have also posted that on the, on yes. the Q&A. <laughs> so we can carry on with the conversation. So thank you very much. See you okay. next week. Have a nice uh, rest of the weekend. Thank you.